Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and this is a GCSE top grade top up for higher tier. This lesson, balancing equations. This topic was suggested by Carter Addy. If there's a topic which is giving you some problems, leave a comment below and I'll add it to my list. Now balancing equations in chemistry is one of those skills which at first glance seems quite complicated and quite difficult and I understand completely that it can be intimidating. It's actually something which is really, really easy with just a tiny bit of practice. I am going to be assuming as I do this video though that you already understand what a chemical formula means. If you don't, then just click here and you can watch my video all about chemical formulae. I'm going to start out with this equation here. CH4 plus O2 gives CO2 plus H2O. This is the formula for the burning, the combustion that is, of methane. So here we've got methane, this is the type of gas which comes out of gas taps, plus O2, oxygen from the air, and this forms, remember the arrow means uh, these are the things which are formed in the reaction, this forms CO2, carbon dioxide, and H2O, which I'm sure you already know is water. This is not a balanced equation yet but it's a very, very common equation, and it's one which allows us to see the process of balancing an equation in quite a lot of detail. Balancing an equation is all about making sure you've got the same number of atoms on both sides of that equation. Think of it as being a little bit like a seesaw, and you need the same amount of stuff on each side to make that seesaw balance. That's why we call it balancing an equation. I'm going to go through this equation, counting up how many of each type of atom I've got on each side of the middle part of the equation here, this arrow. This is kind of like the pivot in our seesaw. So I've got a C here for carbon, and there's no number immediately after it. So that just means one carbon atom. I've got an H with a four after it. Remember, the four just applies to the letter directly in front of it, or to the element directly in front of it. So I've got one carbon and four hydrogens here. And then I've got oxygen with a two after it, so there's two oxygens. So overall, on this side of the equation, we've got one carbon, four hydrogens, two oxygens. Let's do the same on the other side, and that's where we start to see a bit of a problem. Still got one carbon all by itself here. It's attached to two oxygens. Okay, well, we've got two oxygens over there. So far, so good. But here's where we hit our problem. Because we've got H2. This means that we've got just two hydrogen atoms here, and we've got another oxygen here as well. Remember, if there isn't a number behind it, that just means there's one of those. Although we've got the same number of carbons on both sides of this equation, we've got different amounts of oxygen atoms and hydrogen atoms, and so that's what we need to try and balance out. The key to balancing an equation like this is adding numbers to it, but you can only put numbers in specific places. Those places are immediately before each one of these compounds. So we could put a number here, we could put a number here, we could put a number here, and we could put a number there. Those are the only places where you can put the numbers. It's got to be in front of one of these compounds. Now you're not necessarily going to need to put a number in front of all of them, but those are the only four places where we could put numbers. So now we've counted up our atoms, we've seen that the equation is unbalanced, and we know where we can add numbers to the equation. It's a little bit of trial and error from this point on. If we look at the carbons here, well, I don't want to do anything about them. We've got the same amount of carbons here and here, so I'm going to leave that for the moment. Let's take a look at the oxygens instead. We've got two here, but we've got three on this side. That's our biggest problem for a start, because there's no way that three, the two here and the one there, is going to give us an even number. Three is an odd number. So we need to somehow turn this into an even number, because we've got an even number of oxygens over here. Whatever number we put there, we're still going to have an even number, because there's two oxygens. The easiest way to do that is to look at this one and go, well, I've got an even number there. If I stick a two here... I've now got two lots of one oxygen, or two oxygens altogether here. So I've got two oxygens plus another two oxygens there. That gives me four oxygens. Over here, I've got two oxygens, so I'm going to need to double that as well. This has solved the problem with the oxygens now. I've now got four oxygens altogether here, and two plus another two oxygens here, so I've got four on each side. Let's check the other elements and make sure that this works though. 
I haven't done anything to the compounds that have carbon in, so that's not a problem. The carbons are still balanced. Let's have a look at the hydrogens though. I've got four hydrogens here, and I've now got two lots of two hydrogens, so I've got four hydrogens here as well. This is now a balanced equation. I've got the same number of carbons and oxygens and hydrogens on both sides. Now that seemed fairly straightforward when I went, oh well I'll start with the oxygens. I could have potentially started with the hydrogens. There's no definite right or wrong way to do this. Have a go, see if something works out. If it doesn't, try something else. A little bit of trial and error and you'll start to get the hang of it. Let's try another equation and see how we do. This is the equation for the formation of ammonia in the harbour process from nitrogen and hydrogen. Don't worry about this funny arrow in the middle, this just means that the equation is reversible. It can go this way and it can go back the other way. So we start with nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas and it turns into ammonia. You don't need to worry about the details of how that happens. It sounds quite simplistic saying that, but when you're balancing equations, it doesn't really make a difference what the equation is. You're just looking at what numbers do you need to put in front of part of this to make sure that you get the same number of atoms. So let's go through and see what we've got on both sides again. I'm going to give you five seconds and I want you to try and figure out how many of each type of atom we've got on the left and how many we've got on the right. Did you manage? Let's count up and we'll see. So we've got two nitrogens and two hydrogens over here. On this side, we've got one nitrogen and three hydrogens. Now at first glance, this might seem a little bit tricky, but again, we've got this odd number here and I've got an even number over there. So a good guess is to turn this into an even number here by sticking a two in front of it again. Multiplying an odd number by an even number is always going to give you an even number. Now let's recount what we've got. We've got two times one nitrogen, and we've got two times three hydrogens. So two nitrogens and six hydrogens all together over on the right hand side of our equation here. This isn't quite balanced yet, but we're getting closer because now two nitrogens here and two nitrogens there, we've taken a step in the right direction. The nitrogens are balanced. We just need to do something about this hydrogen. Well, we've got six hydrogens all together on this side, two lots of three. So if hydrogen atoms are going around in pairs in their molecules here, so there's two, and I need to make that into six, I'm sure you've already got it. All you need to do is put the big three in front of it like that. We've got three lots of two, which gives us six over here as well. So we've got two nitrogens there, two nitrogens here. Three lots of two hydrogens, giving us six hydrogens, and two lots of three hydrogens, giving us six hydrogens. This is now a balanced equation as well. The key thing to remember is the large number in front of any compound, it multiplies all the atoms in that compound. Basically, you're saying that instead of one H2O molecule, you've got two of them or four of them or whatever large number you write in front of them. We can even take this a step further. Here is the equation for the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate. When you heat calcium carbonate, it breaks down and it will release carbon dioxide gas. This is part of the limestone cycle. But I've left part of the equation unfinished. I'm missing something there. And this actually came up on a previous exam paper. We can use this idea of balanced equations to work out what should be there. If we go through our equation, we can look at what we do have and what we don't have. Well, for a start, the Ca here, this is calcium. There's no calcium over here. So whatever's there must have calcium in it because we haven't accounted for that yet. Let's have a look at what else we've got. Well, we've got one carbon and we've got one carbon here. So the carbons are balanced. We've got three oxygens here, but we've only got two oxygens here. So we're missing a calcium atom and we're missing one of these oxygen atoms. So we can now fill this gap in based on the information. If we assume this is already balanced, once we fill the gap in, we can actually figure that out. So we need one calcium atom C, A, and we've got one oxygen atom, O. This now balances our equation. And this is exactly what happens. Calcium carbonate breaks down to give calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide being given off. The key things to remember here, 
Firstly, you can only put large numbers in front of the compounds. And secondly, you're just trying to make sure there's the same number of each type of atom on both sides. But have a go. It doesn't matter if you get it wrong on the first go. Try again. All you're trying to do is make sure you've got the same number of atoms on both sides. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the SAP quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.